Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 17th video tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this video, we'll discuss a new feature added in version 1.0.7 um, on note quality metrics, our first foray into describing the quality of, of notes that you can get out of the various geometries that you'll use in designing your musical instrument. Thank you, Burton Patkow, for writing this code. In this video, we'll talk about what is a note spectrum graph, how you can use that graph to estimate um, note overblow pitch, and how you can also use that graph to estimate the playability of upper register notes. Um, both very much concerns, especially with Native American flutes. So that said, let's bring up the documentation. So there is documentation on our wiki page, on w, w, designer, w, I designers wiki, um, and I'll give you the direct URL for that that discusses the note spectrum graph. This is so this this video is primarily a walkthrough on using it. I encourage you to read this wiki page. Um, but briefly, the note spectrum graph shows a number of, of metrics. One is the impedance ratio, which I won't get into at all, but this is used in, in determining the tuning of the instrument. Um, the loop gain, and I'll talk about this pretty much exclusively, uh, which in essence measures the resonances at different frequencies for the flute played with a specific note and fingering. And finally, this little um, icon here represents your intended frequency for that, um, that fingered note for a whistle, that's typically a range of frequencies. For the Native American flute, you'll just see one symbol, which represents the intended frequency. So that said, let's actually do the walkthrough. So bring up Woodwind Instrument Designer version 1.0.7, and I've already preloaded it with test instruments. So we're actually going to play with real instruments and see how well the note spectrum uh, predicts the, the playing characteristics of those instruments. I have two instruments. One is a high C flute with six holes, or with seven holes, I beg your pardon. Um, tuned to a, a Verdi tuning, 32 cents flat. Um, you can see it has a double bottom hole. And not characteristic of this geometry, but I found it works very well. The bore gets larger toward the end of the flute. And you can see there's a reverse bore taper in this flute. So that's the, the high C that we'll be using. And we'll also be using a, a lower E flute, um, more consistent with, with my designs, that has a taper, gets, it's large at the top, smaller at the bottom. Um, taper covers all, the, all six holes, um, and it's a six hole flute. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we, we're going to talk about is estimating the overblow frequency of a flute. A lot of people will play a flute and then with the, all holes covered and then blow it a little harder to get the octave. Well, and sometimes the octave's in tune and sometimes it's not. Um, we can use the spectrum to estimate what that overblow frequency. So I'm getting this note 
this mismatch because I had a seven holes in a flute and I had a tuning file that had six holes. I can ignore that for now. Um, so we're selecting that high, high C5 flute and we're going to bring up the tuning file and in order to invoke the note spectrum I will select a note and I can select any note in that tuning file. Um, I'm going to select the lowest note all holes covered. Now I can either click on this toolbar icon and uh, if you're working with a Mac you probably don't have this or I can get it under the tools menu um, graph note spectrum. So let's do that and there is that note spectrum. Um, as I said here's the intended note frequency and it says yes that flute's going to be in tune to that that frequency and it says here's the overblow um, frequency um, on the order of uh, 1050 or so Hertz the relative height of that overblown um, note um, you shouldn't give that too much credence at least for a Native American flute we know that the geometry of the splitting edge um, and the bird um, have a, a very dramatic effect on how how easy it is to overblow that note. Um, the program has no way of estimating that, but we can use this graph to estimate frequencies. Um, at the same time, let's bring up the lowest note for the E flute. So I select the flute in the study and I go over to the tuning file in the editor pane and select the note I want to um, compare and we get another graph and you can see um, it will just as a check show the note that it's using and the flute that it's using it with and again we see um, a flute that's tuned to expectation and the overblow frequency. So let's see how close um, we end up. Let's see how well that is a predictor. I'm going to bring up my favorite computer tuning program, um, Auto Tuner, which shows me hertz as well as notes. And pull this, this C flute and play the lower note. Again, very, very detuned, so it's about 32 cents flat. Um, and we were getting 513 hertz, which matches what we're seeing in the estimates um, for the, the note spectrum. Now, if I overblow this flute, and this flute overblows um, fairly easily, about 1,030 which matches what our note spectrum graph. So we did a good job predicting that. That note's a little bit sharp for, um, for being in tune to the overblow. It's about 20 cents sharp, and this predicts that very well. Now let's go to the E flute. This flute doesn't overblow very easily at all, and rather than um, destroy your ears with me trying to overblow it, I'll crack the top hole a little bit to get the overblow frequency. Three twenty-five. Um, that's about what we're predicting right here. And about six ninety-five which is about what we're predicting here. And you'll note that this one isn't 20 cents sharp, it's a full semitone sharp from what we would like if we use overblowing to play that note. I never do, so I don't worry about that, but... So that's the first use 
of the note spectrum graph, or one of the, it's the first use that I'm going to talk about, which is estimating overblow. The second use I'm going to talk about is estimating how, how well in the second octave the notes are played. And there we will look at the absolute height of um, that loop gain. So let's go back. Again, it tells me I've got a different number of holes. I, no consequences. I'm choosing the C5 maple. And I'm choosing the C5 tuning file. And in this case, I'm going to choose a very high note. In fact, I'm going to choose a note that typically doesn't play reliably on a Native American flute. This is the major major third above the octave. And let's generate the, the note spectrum. And so here's the intended note. And um, here's a note that we didn't, the, uh, a resonance we didn't see before lower than that note. And let's do the same thing for the E flute. Select that and it's going to and the tuning file, again, let's choose the major third, um, major tenth, um, and generate that spectrum. And first, let's go with the, the C flute, the high flute. So, here is the note that we're trying to get, and I'll actually play it on this one because it plays, plays it well. About 1280 hertz, which is what this is showing, about 1280. It hits the, the, the actual frequency we're trying to, to get. But there's this lower, lower peak here, and I'm going to play it softer with no tonguing. About 960, and sure enough, there's that peak at 960. You'll notice that they're, they're of comparable height. That means that I can play either one of them, um, and I'll, I'll get the one I want either by blowing harder or making my attack sharper by tonguing it. So but it's a usable note and it's it's in tune. Remember this is 30, 32 cents flat. It's very tuned. So using this note spectrum graph you can for um, second octave notes, um, third octave notes, if you're doing a whistle, um, determine by the relative heights, not the absolute value, but the relative heights of the loop gain curve, um, if you can, with any reliability, play the note, either of them, that, that you desire. Now let's juxtapose that with my E flute. Um, notice here that the this is the note we would like to play and this is the, the lower frequency note. Um, the lower frequency note is, the loop gain is much higher than the note we would like to play. So that predicts that we're not going to be able to very easily play this note at all. And let's pick up the flute and see if that's true. Um, I'll first play with a um, normal, normal breath. It's playing about 620, which is about what this note is, this, this peak here. Um, I can play it really quite hard. And it doesn't, I hope, doesn't wipe out your ears, still didn't jump to um, that G sharp that I wanted. Now if I tongue it really hard, that's 
then I can get it. Um, I'm playing it, it it got quite sharp because I had to blow so hard, but I can pop it and and then it plays 830 30, which is what that note um, is predicted to be. Um, so you can see by looking at the relative heights of those two points um, that is a, ref a qualitative reflection of the ease in which you're going to be able to get these two notes. And again, as in the lower notes, um, that does not project, at least for the Native American flute, um, to those upper frequencies as far as quantitative values. Uh, typically a Native American flute has a pretty low cutoff frequency, so it doesn't like to play these, these high, doesn't support these high frequencies. It has too big a bore diameter. Um, but that's two, what I find very useful um, uses of the note spectrum graph. And as I promised, I will show you now the URL for that. So the wiki page, the, the specific um, documentation for the note spectrum graph is shown in the first. Um, the release page for um, the latest release of WI Designer is shown in the second URL. If you have problems with the program, um, please post them in the issues page and see what other people have posted as issues and enhancement requests and so forth. Um, all these video tutorials, you can find links on this page. Um, and the, the route for documentation on using WI Designer can be found in the last URL. Have a good day.